Good morning, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, I have never been a huge fan of John Mayer. Now, I don't mean to say by that that I actively dislike his music, it's just that he's one of those artists that for one reason or another, I have never really got into. I've never just sat down and listened to his music before. I've heard it in various places, but it's never been something that I've pursued. A few of my friends are really, really into him. They're in fact gonna go see him live in London on Saturday. So that piqued my interest a little bit. And then thanks to the YouTube user, Lucy Brown, who recommended last month that I review his album, I have now sat down and listened to a John Mayer album in its entirety, and it's good. Good. So for those of you who don't know who John Mayer is, he is a 39 year old guitarist, singer, songwriter and producer. He's released a lot of music and he's dated a lot of celebrities. He is a sexy, sexy man though. And his most recent full length release, The Search for Everything, came out on the 14th of April this year. So I'm going to review it. And just for full disclosure, like I said, I've never really listened to much of his music before. So I'm not going to be reviewing this in the context of how his other music sounds or comparing it to any of that. This is just going to be my opinion on an album that I'd never heard before. And as always, let me know what you want me to review down in the comment section. I will pick one at random and review that for next month. Anyway, let's get into the review. So track one, Still Feel Like Your Man. This is a really, really cool track. The opening vocals remind me a little bit of Justin Vernon from Bonnie Ver. Only at the very beginning though. This is a super smooth and slick track with some sort of solely funk influences. It's really catchy and it's one of those songs that kind of just puts a smile on your face without you really needing to think about it too much. Track number two, Emoji of a Wave, is a total contrast to the opening track on this album and I really, really like that. It initially has a very quiet, almost delicate sound to it. Absolutely superb vocal melodies and the guitar accompaniment to it is just totally perfect. And I also really like how big the choruses of this song sound compared to how delicate it was in the beginning. And the lyrics are amazing. Oh honey, I've been talking to myself. Like just the, something about the way that he sings that. It's just so cool. It's just the rhythm and the melody that he uses. It's, he's an amazing songwriter and a good lyricist. And it's one of my favorite tracks on the album for sure. Track number three is called Helpless. Again, it's another contrast to the previous track. It's got these really kind of crunchy guitars that open it up. The groove that comes in is really slick. And obviously there are some great guitar licks throughout it. I also really like the male and female female vocal layering that goes on in the chorus. It kind of just adds a little bit of extra sparkle to the sound. Track number four is called Love on the Weekends. This was the first single released from the album and I totally understand why because it is easily one of my favorite tracks on there. Again, really effective contrast to the previous track. It's a bit smoother, it's quite slow paced, but just the chord progressions and the instrumentation and the lyrics all fit together so well. I can't really think of anything much to say about it than it's an amazing song. Track five is called In the Bloods. Now this starts off with some really big percussion. There are some huge sounding hand claps. I feel like this song has definitely got a sort of country folky vibe to it. Great choice of lyrical content as well. It's reflective, it's introspective, it's kind of looking at family members and how much of their lives influence you and whether or not you're going to become your parents and all of that kind of stuff. It's just really, really nice. Great guitar solo near the end as well, but that's kind of obvious because it's John Mayer. Every guitar bit is going to be fantastic. Track number six is called Changing. Now this is a piano-led track. I think one of my friends that's really into John Mayer said that this was quite unusual for John Mayer to have a piano-based track, but um, let me know if that's true or not. Bit of a quieter song overall than the previous one, which is nice. It kind of slows things down a little bit. Great use of repetition in the rhythm and melody on the words changing. And then there's a super sexy, awesome guitar solo that comes in at the end. Track number seven is the theme from the album, The Search for Everything. It's kind of like a little musical interlude, a palette cleanser, if you will. It breaks up the album really well. And I'm a fan of interludes. I know that not everyone is, but I definitely think if you're listening to something as a whole album, interludes can be really effective if they're at the right point. Track eight is called Moving On. Now this song is slick as f Super smooth, slightly funky guitar based tune. It's just really, really sexy. It's got a great groove to it and the lyrical separation that's used in certain phrases works so well. And the guitar licks and solos are obviously incredible. Track number nine is called Never On The Day You Leave. Now this is a slower piano based ballad. Again, this has been really well placed on the album in terms of contrast between songs. It's also a really good example of someone taking mostly a simple four chord structure and turning it into a really good song. The lyrics are great. They're reflective on past loves and relationships that you kind of miss, but by the time you realise you missed them, it's kind of too late. It's just a beautiful song. Track number 10 is called Rosie. Now, I've been informed by some people that this is kind of like a traditional John Mayer sounding song. I obviously wouldn't know because this is the first time I've really listened to him. But if that is the case, then great, because I love it. Again, really smooth, really expressive guitar playing and a very infectious groove going throughout it as well. It's just a really nice, skillfully made feel good song. Track 11 is called Roll It On Home. Now, there are some definite country influences in this. And I love in this how John Mayer can make a really clean guitar tone sound so expressive if he's not having to mask it with loads of effects or anything. It's literally just his skill at his instrument that's creating it. To be honest, I didn't feel like there was anything particularly special about this song. I did enjoy it, it was really smooth, but it wasn't like a standout track for me. Track 12 is called You're Gonna Live Forever In Me. This is another piano-led track with some really delicate instrumentation. Now, a friend of mine said that this kind of sounds like it could be the theme to a Toy Story film, and I totally know what he means. It's 100% got a kind of iconic Pixar film theme vibe going throughout it, and that's a good thing. 
really nice soft expressive piano playing and singing and then some strings come in later on that kind of pad the sound out a bit. The whistling is great and I f***ing hate whistling in songs, okay, but in this song it works really well. That's partly because you can tell it is a real whistle. It's just a fantastic closer and compared to the first track on the album, this one, it just kind of rounds everything off in a really, really nice satisfying way. So there we go. All in all, I think it's a genuinely brilliant album. One of the things I like most about it is the track arrangement. Whoever's responsibility it was to order the tracks in that did a f***ing brilliant job because that's exactly how an album should be. No song feels like a filler. It all kind of leads into each other really, really well and it never gets boring. Each song is definitely its own thing. You never feel like you're getting two of the same songs kind of put right next to each other. Considering I've never been an affluent listener of John Mayer's, I can confidently say that that's going to change. If you're a fan of John Mayer, let me know what some of your favourite albums and tracks are of his because I will definitely be checking them out. And like I said, he's quite possibly the sexiest man in the world. So yeah, this album is brilliant. I would definitely recommend it to anyone. I'm going to give it a score of 76, which is a high first by university standards. So yeah, very, very good album. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this. And as is always the case, let me know some recommendations down in the comments section and I will be checking them out and I'll do a new review for next month. And if you've listened to this album, let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I would love to hear anyone's thoughts and opinions on this piece of music. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you very soon.